The role of governments in industrialization should not be overlooked. Official British trade missions began arguing for the benefits of free trade once Britain's manufacturers had gained the advantage in producing these low-cost consumer products. But the devotion to free markets that was championed by people like Adam Smith and his disciples was relatively new. When inexpensive cotton calicos from India in the 1720s had begun to be preferred for making English clothing, the domestic wool industry had pressured Parliament into passing the Calico Acts to prohibit their import. But later, when the British textile industry began using technologies that gave Britain an advantage in cotton cloth production, the government didn't consider the complaints of the East London weavers, and it even took steps to protect trade secrets and prevent too rapid a technology transfer to help Britain profit from its innovations. Britain began producing cotton cloth even more inexpensively than India. And then suddenly, the British began preaching about free trade and pushing to erase any tariffs or regulations that might prevent British textiles from dominating world markets. The nations of continental Europe and the United States quickly tired of being just a source of raw materials for British factories and a market for British products. To support economic development, these governments began taxing imports with tariffs of their own to protect their emerging industries from this flood of British manufactured goods. Tariffs increased the price of the imports to consumers, encouraging them to buy the now competitively priced domestic products. Protection from foreign competition has helped many fledgling industries get off the ground in developing nations. However, governments that choose to constantly raise tariffs run the risk of subsidizing their industry's inefficiencies and reducing the welfare of their consumers as industrial improvements in other countries lower the prices of imported products. Now, many histories begin the Industrial Revolution with the invention of steam engines, and many mention that by the 1820s, steam-powered looms had replaced the hand weavers of the earlier industry. This description actually misses a whole generation of innovation and growth when textile mills were powered by water. The Scottish textile factories at New Lanark, for example, were begun in 1786 by David Dale using water power technology developed by Richard Arkwright in the 1770s. New Lanark was built on the Clyde River in Scotland, and all of its machines were powered by the river, actually all the way until the mills were finally closed in 1968. The American textile mills in New England that dominated the world market in the second half of the 19th century also used water power. The men who started the Boston Manufacturing Company that built the cities of Lowell and Lawrence in Massachusetts to take advantage of the water power of the Merrimack River had visited New Lanark in 1810 and 1811 to learn the technology before they began their own venture. Robert Owen and his partners at New Lanark had bought the mills in 1799 from David Dale, who was actually Owen's father-in-law. Sensitive to the negative social changes that industrial growth had produced in other parts of Britain, Owen built schools for the children of his workers and social organizations for their families. He put an end to the long-standing custom of forcing the workers to buy only from the company store, and he tried to make New Lanark into a real living town. Owen's partners actually objected to this philanthropy, and they claimed that healthier, happier, better educated workers didn't really boost the company's bottom line. Rather than fighting with them, Owen simply bought his partners out. So some questions for discussion. First, what are the pros and what are the cons of tariffs? And then secondly, why would an industrialist like Robert Owen be concerned about his workers' social welfare.